There's about 2 billion aluminum cans used each year. While recycling them comes as second nature to most people, you can also get a lot of use out of them before sending them off to aluminum heaven. Let's get right into it and show you some great and novel ways to reuse those cans and save some time, money, and perhaps have a little fun along the way. You may have scented wax blocks or oils laying around your house that can give off a nice pleasant scent when heat is applied. There's no need to pay upwards of 10 to 20 bucks for a holder when you can easily construct one yourself with just a can and a small tea candle. Just grab yourself an empty can and use a knife to punch a hole about halfway up. Once the hole is made, use some scissors to carefully cut around the can. You want this to be as straight of an edge as possible, so be sure to clean up any hanging metal pieces so that the can will sit flat on any surface. Once that's done, cut a small window out of the bottom that's just large enough to fit a tea candle in. Just a couple snips on the side and one across should do it. Now grab your scented wax or oils and place them in the rounded bowl at the top. Light up your candle and slide it under. Give it a few minutes to work its magic. Your room should begin filling with whatever fantastic aroma you added to the top. Just make sure not to touch the can with your bare hands as it's going to be hot. Let everything run its course and cool down before refilling or putting it away. Mmm, smells great. Now you might find this one a bit silly, but if you're living that dorm life, it can really save you if you have a craving for nachos. Using your can opener, carefully remove the top of your can of choice. The next part is fairly straightforward. Get a nail or a thumbtack and punch holes into the can. Before removing it, press down and pull to create a rough edge on the outside. These holes will help you strip delicious cheese right from the block and into the can itself. Granted, this isn't pretty by any stretch of the imagination, and you need to make sure that no metal shavings fall off of the can to be safe. But you can single-handedly save Taco Tuesday and earn the nickname of MacGyver from all your friends by capturing that cheese in your can grater. If you have a door that continually slowly swings open and close on its own, convert an aluminum can into a doorstop. Grab yourself an empty can and carefully fill it with sand or gravel. Once you fill it near the top, use a paper clip to grab the tab and pull it closer to the opening to avoid spillage. For added measure on wooden vinyl floors, a circle of anti-slip drawer liner placed or glued to the bottom of the can should help with grip and stability. Next time that door becomes a problem, stop it dead in its tracks with your fancy makeshift doorstop. Your empty cans may also assist you in saving that cooking grease or even as a festive way to serve drinks. As per usual, cut off the top of an empty can with a utility knife or just use a can opener. A quality can opener can give you a nice clean cut without any sharp edges, leaving you with an empty cup that you can pour your favorite beverage into and use over and over again. You can also utilize those empty cans to hold your collection of pens, pencils, or even your markers. It's a cheap and effective way to store that stuff on your desk and keep it out of sight and out of mind. If you've ever wanted to keep fresh herbs in your kitchen or perhaps just want a unique holder for a small plant, this will be right up your alley. To avoid having to sand down the edges of a can after removing the top, there is a bit of technique involved. Get your can opener and nestle the geared edge under the outside of the lip of the can. Line up the sharp edge to be directly under the inside of the lip and slowly press in. Once you have that down, just turn the knob carefully and remove the top portion of the can. This will leave you with the lip of the can still intact so there won't be any sharp edges, and it also gives you plenty of opportunity to make use of this thing. After you have the amount of cans you desire, take them outside and give them a few coats of spray paint. I went with a nice glossy red, but you could choose any color that matches your kitchen or windowsill. Try your best to cover up any printing on the can. It'll definitely take several coats, so I highly suggest fast drying paint. Once everything's dried, you're ready for action. I grabbed some potting soil I had in the garage and filled each can up about three quarters of the way. After this, I added some fresh parsley plants that I got at the grocery store for about a buck. I also added a little cactus as I figured that would look pretty cool. Once the plants are inside, add more soil to the top and press everything in to make sure it's snug and secure. Place them wherever you desire, though giving them direct access to sunlight is ideal to keep them healthy and strong. Oh, and don't forget to water them occasionally. Water is the stuff plants crave. Here's an old trick that you may have learned in grade school. Before you finish off your next canned beverage, save the last few ounces or simply add water to an empty can. When the can is tilted, the liquid at the bottom balances at the same angle as the bottom edge, making you look like David Blaine to all your ill-informed friends. Street magic. Here's a fun one you can use to impress your friends and family. If you're a young one, make sure you have an adult to supervise as we're going to be dealing with some heat and don't want anyone to get burned. Start by taking a bowl of cold water. You can add ice to it if you wish to make sure things go smoothly. Now grab an empty can and add about one tablespoon of water to it. Place it directly on the burner of your stove and crank it up to high. After a minute or so, you'll hear the water boiling inside. Let it do this for about 30 seconds as you want to make sure that all the air inside the can is pushed out by the water vapor. 
Now get some tongs and softly grab the can in the center, flipping it upside down directly into the bowl of water. The can will instantly collapse, making for an impressive science experiment. When the can's dipped into the water, the vapor inside quickly condenses, which forms a partial vacuum on the inside. The air pressure on the outside of the can will then push inwards on the aluminum, forcing it to crush. Pretty cool, huh? Make a whistle out of a soda can in just a minute of your time. Cut the top off with a utility knife or scissors. Then cut down the middle to the bottom and remove the bottom too. You'll be left with a sheet of metal that you can cut a few strips out of. Now the measurements don't need to be exact, but one must be larger than the other. The smaller strip needs to be placed perpendicular to the larger strip near the top. Now just fold over the excess on the sides of the smaller strip and the top of the larger one. Now just fold over at the bottom of the small strip and bend the longer strip of aluminum downwards. Curl the metal up with a marker until it's near the top of the mouth part. In order to make the whistle work, you'll need to make a larger gap with scissors. Hold your index finger and thumb over the open sides and give it a nice big blow. If you did this right, you should get an awesome whistling sound. If you're not getting sound, then just keep adjusting that metal slightly and check for gaps that allow the air to escape. Scrap cans are also great for making cookie cutters for all your baking needs. Get your can and cut the top and bottom off using a pair of scissors. This doesn't need to look pretty as we'll fix the edges in a second. Once you have an empty cylinder, just cut down the center and lay your metal on a flat surface that leaves a little room for scissors. Now you can clean it up and make some straight clean edges to work with. Now place a ruler over the metal and bend the edges in. This will achieve two things. One, you won't have any sharp edges that could cut you, and two, it'll give the metal a bit more strength, which will help us when we're molding it to our desired shape. Fold the metal in half to start and carefully work the edges inward towards the middle. You can mess with this quite a bit to get everything as even as possible. Just round off any areas that need it and finally make a little flap on one end that opens up so that you can tuck the other end into it and crimp it shut with some pliers. Now, baking isn't my specialty, so I decided to cook an egg in this thing. By just tossing it into the heated pan and then cracking an egg inside, you can make yourself a heart-shaped egg that's great for a little breakfast in bed gift. Make sure to add the proper seasoning and serve your final product to a loved one. Remember, it's the thought that counts, even if they don't like it. So as you can see, there's countless ways to upcycle aluminum cans. With 6,700 cans used every second worldwide, you have plenty to choose from. Let us know what you do with your extra aluminum cans, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.